actually posted you a question a while ago about uh, skyboxes and uh, first of all, I thought it'd be quite good if you had, if you separated skyboxes in workshop in the workshop because at the moment, if you go into the mod, it's quite hard to see what's mods and what's uh, work. So it'd be quite cool if you added like a tab on the uh, a preference on the side of Steam that allowed you to just see uh, skyboxes. And I think they said, are they yeah asked are they going to be implemented to function as easily as mods are? Um, So that could work, and and also, I think I asked you about um, the lot. The, um, the, the I think it's, I think it's shaders. The the lightness levels. You know how I'm sure you've seen some skyboxes that are really dark because the um, the shadows are set to really dark and stuff. And I I think I asked you about this on Twitter once, and I said, um, and you told me that uh, it might come as a feature when you have sectors and stuff. Is that still? The kind of feelings for that, because obviously you can do it in if you dial out a skybox and if it's set to really dark. And you might have seen the really dark uh, skybox on Workshop, but and I, I have seen a mod. Uh, I think it's uh, called Pitch Black. Pitch Black, that's it. Pitch yeah. Black, yeah. And yeah. Uh, this one actually has uh, like the total darkness. Yeah, it's creepy. And <laughs> and, uh, and even if there wasn't uh, this Pitch Black. Uh, with modding API, you would be able to alter these, these mm -hmm. numbers. So, I mean, it's one of the things that we don't want to push on people. Uh, it's just like one of the quick decisions we made to move forward. You know, it was like either we spent uh, uh, days deciding on what's the best color for uh, the sky background, mm -hmm. or we just keep it as it is and move forward. You okay. Know? Right. That thing. It's not like. Uh, it has to be this way, otherwise it's the wrong choice. No, it was just like quick decision just, to okay. go forward. And uh, uh, I don't know if we will change the default setting. Probably not, because I mean we cannot change things that people are already used to. Yeah. But they will still have a choice. To yeah, if it's a choice, yeah, yeah. A slider or a, you could type in a number, that would be cool. By the way, if we implement uh, these larger worlds, then uh, it would change... Um, skyboxes little mm -hmm. because uh, they would probably not contain the uh, little asteroids that are in the sky box. oh yeah yeah I see you mean and space fog isn't it the the wind, the wind. space fog actually the reason for space fog was that you can get a certain feeling of uh, depth mm -hmm. in the in the picture you know because things that are close to you don't have fog and things that are further oh, they have some fog so this was the, the reason oh, okay and uh, maybe also the reason yeah it was kind of maybe strange for some people but we didn't want people to feel that the game is about darkness it was like uh, uh you know like when you see a game like for example far cry 3 it's full of uh like sunny pictures, you know, so it feels like a, like a vacation mm -hmm. or something like Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, whereas on the other side you have games that are in complete darkness yeah. and they, they may feel uh, sad for some people. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a good compromise to, 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 uh, to put them in an environment that's, uh, that's bright enough to... To work and uh, build easily, you know. This was the reason. Yeah. And uh, since... Uh, uh, you actually don't have much much light on the surfaces that are on the opposite side of, of the, the, of the sun. sun. Yeah. Then we had to to do these things. I say for building and stuff, it's definitely it's, it's you know it's useful. I think it's only from the 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 realism and the kind of in the cinematic stuff and the kind of just the feeling. It, it kind of almost makes space feel more creepy and dangerous. Um, but like you say. Uh, I guess probably because Space Engineers, the main thing about it, the main vision of it is the stuff that you build. You want to be able to do that easily, so the light setting made sense. Um, so I was asked to ask you one or two, what are the one or two bigger upcoming features that they're playing that we, that we don't, well, we don't know about yet, or maybe you've mentioned them, but um, yeah, and and programming might not be in that. So you said the modding API will be big. Um, is there any more things you could tell us? Uh, blueprints. Blueprints, forgot about those, yeah. And then after blueprints, probably 
uh, 3D printers. 3D printers. Wow. I'm just not sure if we'll do it uh, right after blueprints because sometimes we we do something and then we see the next thing is not so important, so we don't do it immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, 3D printers won't be that. I mean, they are not super hard, but they are still tricky. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, what we just started is blueprints. Cool. Yeah, and and I, I assume that's sharing them and stuff and you can you can send them to people and yeah, you, you can scan something yeah then uh, you can uh, edit the blueprint in uh, some kind of like holographic visualization yeah environment. Uh, oh, cool. and uh, and then you can share it either on workshop or just send it to some person and uh, what else and then eventually when we will have 3d printers you will be able to print them nice and that would definitely be good in survival. <laughs> yeah. But um, and that maybe the holographic thing comes on to um, there was a because at the moment there's well one of the big things people ask me is well, it was about screens, LED stuff, LCD stuff, and I was told that I'm not sure who told me, but like that at the moment it's there's no this it's hard in the engine to display uh, text and stuff. On models, uh, sure, it's possible. Okay, that's that's encouraging. And, uh, this is one of the things that we, we also uh, discussed mm -hmm. yesterday, and I'm just thinking, what was the decision? <laughs> if you do it now or wait, but uh, I mean, uh, there was one thing why we may do it uh, soon, uh, but it's not like within weeks. Yeah, and uh, uh, so we definitely can. Uh, basically, what you need to do when you have this LCD uh, panel, mm -hmm. uh, you have a texture, and you need to render in that texture, and then use that texture to render the LCD. And okay. uh, uh, yeah. the way how you render to a texture, it's actually very easy, and uh, we do it uh, all the time in the game for oh. other other things that just people don't see. And so even rendering text to this uh, texture isn't, I mean, it's not something we don't know how to do, it's something we just, if we just had enough time, we would Okay. So, uh, and uh, if we will have programmable modules, then this is one of the things that's really useful to have, because you can actually write programs wow. and then see the output, you know, on this uh -huh. screen, which can be cool. And I think that what was going on for the blueprint thing was, it, this is probably, you know, this is the kind of thing we were a bit way off, but I would love it if you could have an LCD panel that could actually have, show a holographic of a blueprint. So, you know, you see, you know, you see all the sci-fi stuff, you see like a damage report thing and it's got like, mm -hmm. it's got like a, the blueprint of the ship up and it tells you where it's damaged and stuff, but it would, it would just be a screen and it would use the grid and kind of, and just have it, it could be rotating on like, on the, you know, this is in the future kind of thing, but... Is something like that, again, is that possible? Um, I mean, technically it's possible. Uh, cool, yeah. Because you could say you could use the blueprint for the ship and set the screen to basically display the blueprint on a screen, yeah. that would be... Basically this is how uh, mirrors in games are made. Mm -hmm. That uh, you have some screen somewhere and you render the scene from a point of view of that uh, mirror. Okay. And you need to just change the, the view matrix, matrices and things mm -hmm. like that, but basically it's about uh, rendering the scene from a different angle. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. And uh, it's, I mean, on current generation hardware, it's a normal thing. There's nothing, nothing really oh, okay. advanced about it. Yeah. So this is possible, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. So. All sorts of stuff. Um, God, that's, uh, let me just find a good one, just free down. Um, Oh, there's, I guess, anything to hint about longer term goals, but I guess you've probably already answered that. Just you, you're just taking it step by step, aren't you? But we have long term goals. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, even things that we are working today, uh, they were once long term goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sure multiplayer at one point was a lucky yeah. one. <laughs> Survival. Survival. Was, yeah. As well, then uh, molding was one of the long term goals. Uh, what else? Well, right now it's this modding API. Yeah. And uh, and uh, then 
still finishing these little little features, mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, I would, I mean, we have the idea. It's just like uh, we should keep it uh, for ourselves. For now, yeah. yeah for now, Don't want to ruin the surprise. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this, I mean, that probably that isn't really a question. That was just, I think, it's, well, it, at the moment with explosions. Um, they even they damage things behind them because of the radius. I'm yeah, this is something we need to redo. Yeah, because mm -hmm. currently explosions are not really volumetric. Oh, right. You know yeah. they're just like you just set radius and it just yeah. And uh, we also have idea how to do this volumetrically. Okay. So and that's we should do it because like the game likes space engineers shouldn't have this kind of explosions. Well, it's just sometimes when a ship will be shot. Like even if it's you know armor stuff, it would just like rip out the internals, so you'd just be left with like just just floating armor. It would destroy all the components and the engines and the thrusters and stuff. But just because of not because it hit it, just because of that invisible radius. Um, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good question. So how many how much of stuff in SE was planned, and how much has been added because of feedback from the community? Well. This is hard to measure. Yeah. And I mean, if I wanted, I probably could measure it. But if I would go just by the change log, you know, and and yeah. see, <laughs> uh, uh, well, many things uh, were uh, suggested by the community, but we already knew we want those things. Yeah. So uh, this was like close match of our opinion and the community's opinion, which is good. Yeah. And uh, then there were. There were things that people didn't want us to add, and we added them. And uh, I mean, the, the, the I remember, remember frost damage. I remember that was the update I remember because the first day you released it, thought on the toggle, people were opening their worlds, and there was just destruction everywhere. Their ships were exploding because people had, people had, you know, they had these ten thrusters in a line inside their ships, facing each other, all kinds of crazy stuff, and. For the people who enjoyed building replicas, you know, Star Wars replicas and stuff, and stuff that, because of the frost, they couldn't, they had to cheat to do it. Um, I remember that upset people. <laughs> but you quickly added the toggle and everyone was, everyone was good. But. And this was uh, a good experience where we saw that um, when we, I mean, before we, uh, we, uh, we released this update, we knew that some people will have problem mm. because they build their ships assuming that the damage is not there and uh, we actually should have been smarter and we should have added this option to switch it off yeah uh, so this was a good uh, good example you know how to do early access development or how to not do but we fixed it so it was okay and uh, so uh, the, the ratio of what we wanted and what the community wanted uh, it's really hard to say, but I would say that like maybe fifty percent is from people, but it's yeah. also uh, very much uh, the ideas that we have. So it's overlapping. So it's hard to say, but uh, the, the game is definitely shaped by the community. Which is and and that and that's one of the, another thing that makes Space Engineers fantastic because people who buy the game they can actually change the future and they can and they can see it and they can see how. The suggestions that they've made are actually shaping the game, so that's definitely a good, a, a good thing. Um, I was going to ask about, uh, in, I mean, I know there's a lot, I mean, it's, it's been on and off, people are asking about um, Linux and Mac, Mac and SteamOS support kind of thing, and I know, and, and the, I mean, the answer, I mean, you've answered, the answer before was, um, you know, you're concentrating on the PC version, just get that finished, and then we could get some people in, and especially you know, to do the Linux version, etc. But you just said that at the moment, well, at the time, you were concentrating on um, the PC. But now you've kind of done the whole Xbox thing. Is are other operating systems now in your mind? The well, they they always were in in our mind, yeah. but uh, the thing with Linux and uh, Mac is. Uh, if you look on it from just practical reasons, 
and you will see how many people use uh, Linux and Macintosh, especially on uh, on Steam. Yeah. And we have these statistics. Mm -hmm. It's it's really a low number. It is. And uh, now, if we would dedicate some time to port the game, and not just port like once, but keep it updated every week, fix all the bugs on Windows, Macintosh, Linux, I... and uh, just for. Uh, uh, just for a few people, it would mean that it would uh, take our time and focus from other things. Yeah, and costly as well. You, that's you know, that's uh, more important or more demanded by a much more people. You know, so the choice is basically about this: like, are we going to uh, focus on only a small group and ignore the big group, or are we rather going to do what good for the big group and? You know, not not so good for the for the minority. And it's hard because you want to help the minority, yeah, but it's just not it's just not viable. Yeah. You know, as a thing. So, I guess the answer to that is just maybe so, down so the line. Right now, we are just postponing yeah. the decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's not only about uh, having more people because I mean we can always hire people and yeah. we are still getting uh, new people in the team. But uh, even if there he will be a thousand people. We still uh, will need to make decisions like uh, what's the best um, way our people can spend their time on and if there is something more important than something else then we just do the more important thing. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a practical decision and I mean sometimes we do things that are not uh, very rational for example like we had at wheels it was something that the game required. It was just one of the things that we wanted to have um, out of the list. You know, like yeah. this is finished. People can play with this, and uh, we were curious what they will create with the wheels. But definitely, it wasn't like the game needs wheels. No, there's no. They, they, they've met, they've, it was just there's a, yeah. It's a lot of fun because there were a lot of people when it came out were like wheels in space. You know, <laughs> so yeah. I mean. But I guess at the end of the day, it's it's also it's it's a, it's a sandbox game. It's about crying crazy stuff and playing around physics. So, and wheels are one of the you know they're they're one of the um, in, it just in, in the world they're quite a, a big part of engineering and things. So it was definitely good to, to thing to add. And uh, sometimes we add things that uh, uh, they're kind of experimental. Uh, we just like move the boundaries of what's possible in space engineers a little bit more to see mm. what people will start creating and uh, uh, this impacts our decisions in the future. So it's like we enabled or we added uh, wheels, not only because um, some people maybe wanted them, but because we were expecting that some people, uh, they will start creating some creative and super stuff with the wheels. And uh, this in a chain reaction will uh, will explode in ideas on our side. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes it's like you put you give something to people just so they can show you something which triggers new ideas on your side. Yeah. So, sometimes it's like like just you're know, just like touching it and uh, getting reactions. I know this is on your list of things to do, and that would be the um, so the tab system and stuff for the inventory. Because there's, I mean, I mean, I've seen some pretty good ideas that people have put online that they've actually, you know, produced like a UI. What it would have looked like, and that could be, um, you know, filtering for different types. So it's like you know, um, thrusters and um, uh, decorative stuff. And also, you could also maybe do it by just have your own tab. So you could create a new tab, and you could just drag in blocks, especially for mods. This would be good. So I think somebody told me that you were working on that. Um, I, I can check this. Uh, and so it's about inventory, not about the uh, uh, this G screen. No, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, G screen, G screen, G screen. So filtering and G screen. G filtering and G screen. Because I, I. I'm not sure, but I think we discussed this. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure someone told me that the, the you know, there's going to be like a tab system, but uh, the, 
and it's only it's only really an issue. You know, the vanilla game's fine. It wouldn't need. It's only because now already there's there's hundreds of mob blocks. I mean, you could say you'd have to use them all, but uh, it, it's quite hard to you know organize them. So if you could either organize it by the modder, and he the modder could have his own tab, or you say there could be like uh, thruster, thrusters and uh, and then deck. You, you can organize it by type of block either. So. I don't know where to do that or custom, so you can just drag, drop and drag stuff in the G Suite and organize it yourself. Um, uh, the something okay. So, will space engineers have heat management? I'm not. I. I. I that's. I, not really sure what what he, what they meant by that. But it maybe leads on to like cooling, cool, cooling engines and stuff. Uh, I'm assuming that's what it means. Well, uh, temperature, uh, we, we thought about temperature at the beginning, mm -hmm. but uh, then we never thought about it again, again. Uh, it didn't feel like like one of the things that must be no. in, in the game. I, I guess so it, we focused it, just on, on different um, areas. I guess, I mean, the main point up to now, you've been concentrated on the building aspects and the whole... This comes under the whole kind of um, pressurized stuff, food, the more detailed realism stuff. Whereas so far you've been, it's, it's, just, it's just been about making the building experience the best it can be kind of thing. So that's that. Um, I've got two here that are quite similar. So any plans to make a medium ship choice? And I think that kind of, well, that's, that's in between the small and the large or this one where it's a smaller construction grid allowing you to make really detailed ship construction. Uh, and I know that you've, you, I think you might have said about, you were thinking about the, put, the ability of putting small blocks on large, but then, yeah, I'm not, I can't remember the, all, all the facts, but what do you think about that then, different construction grids other than large and small? Um, well, we considered this a really long time ago, mm -hmm. but never went for the idea to, to, having, to have something like medium and you know, like small, medium, large, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to be careful about this because again, uh, it would require a lot of um, a 3D art work. Yeah. Also, many changes, and the question is if it is uh, so much needed and uh, required, and. Uh, so I, I don't know at this moment. So I, I guess with the small ships, obviously the models, the thrust, uh, for the uh, the generate, they're, they're different, aren't they? And, and the conveyor tubes, they're all different for small and large. Some of them are the same, but most of them are different. I mean, the, the, the easiest thing would, how, would it would it be quite easy just to have, to have just small armor blocks on large ships? Because that way people could build detailed, well, more and detailed interiors using, uh, yeah. I will speak about this with the, the colleagues. Okay, cool. Because we actually made some uh, in, we, we, we have some experimental things here, as I said, and uh, we made something that's like this, and we still have to decide what, how many of these things want to move to space. Okay, space. yeah. So this is one of them. Cool. It is, it, it is purely just for more detailed design, so they can, you know, can you know, add more interesting shapes. And... So there's one about, will there be any other hazards, such as nebulae, dust fields, smaller meteorites, comets, and... Yeah, some more hazards. Have you thought about that? So I know solar flares was at some point something that you were talking about. Yeah, we, we, uh, I mean, we had them in minor wars, mm -hmm. and uh, we actually started to add them to, uh, we started to add little solar flares to space engineers. Yeah. But we stopped after some time because uh, there were some performance issues. Mm -hmm. um, just to explain, uh, you need to calculate the, the visibility, the raycast between uh, almost each block and the solar flare source, which means a lot of calculations almost every second. Yeah. So it's and, sorry, uh, this can result in hundreds uh, 
of uh, raycasts per second and that's just too much for computers. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless we come up with some some good optimi optimization for this, then... Uh, uh, but yeah, it was one of the things that we actually wanted to add and I think we will add uh, solar flats mm -hmm. at some moment and about other ideas like some nebulas or black, uh, black, uh, black holes or ah, uh, cool. uh, maybe sometime we'll start thinking about this or maybe they will be added to modes. Nice. At one point you were talking about um, having gravity affect all objects and it was one of the features that you asked people if they were interested in on one of the questionnaires you did. Um, uh, you mean like spherical gravity? No, no, no. I mean, uh, like, so in artificial mass, that means ships are affected by gravity. There was, you talked about having all ships affected by um, gravity. So that's why we added uh, artificial mass. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, uh, so it's optional. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that was the idea. And, uh, um, Maybe uh, we will uh, return back to this idea sometime in the future and think about some option in world settings uh, which will en enable uh, gravity on everything mm -hmm. as, as it should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It'd obviously probably be a, probably be a, um, a setting because it, it can be a pain if you've got ships continuously just floating down. And I think that's another question about gravity would actually be the... I saw something just yesterday actually or the other day about... Um, which I hadn't really thought about until now was the fact that when the gravity switches, your astronaut flips around to land on his feet on the gravity. Yeah. Have you? I mean, I'm assuming that's just for ease because it'd be a pain if you. The idea was if there was a toggle on the gravity generator, so it, you just kind of fell whichever direction you were in. No, sort of, we we implemented this on purpose. So uh -huh. uh, whenever um, you are basically falling down. You will fall on your feet. Yeah, it's definitely easy that way because you have to get it back up again. You know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and there's a question about S because obviously I'm not SE Toolbox. I'm sure you guys have checked it out and stuff, and it's it's allowed the last horse of things. It's been around for a long time, almost since the game came out, and it's allowed a lot of people to, um, yeah, help them with their save the world and stuff. And yeah, so are there any plans to have a? Um, like a, a, a official in-game custom world generator, as this question said. But basically, a, an official SE toolbox almost. It could be in-game or out, out of game. I'm not sure. Uh, well, we would probably we are probably going to um, like add some options for editing the world. Mm -hmm. Especially in a creative mode. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if it will mimic every feature of uh, C Toolbox. Probably not, because you know, like that's the idea of having these two boxes models, yeah, yeah. to have something more. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's it. Okay, that's cool. As I say, it's, um, I think like, the, the features of C Toolbox, a lot of people wouldn't use anyway. It's just. But I think there's, there could be a, maybe a couple more world settings in the base game that could help people out a lot. Um, uh, what's, oh yeah, so with um, inter-server inter well, inter -server travel and you could say sectors, different um, going from world save to different saves, is this, um, any, any more thoughts on this? Um, um, we it's not something we are like actively mm -hmm. uh, analyzing or uh, designing. I think there was actually one of the. I think the one of the models reckon that they they could, if they had like an API and but they could probably yeah. do something themselves like an like an interstellar thing. But I think they will and right after the the dream will be actually to to increase the world size, mm -hmm. you know and. Uh, Basic to make it infinite. That would be the dream. Yeah. So wow. if you're in the world, then you don't need to travel. That's yeah. Because I mean, that's that's probably that goes in hand in hand. People asking me to ask you about infinite worlds and world generation, and I'm sure you can. You, I think you said earlier about you're, you're looking at stuff about 
generating asteroids and stuff as you go out. Um, is, what, is, 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 um, I can imagine the issue with that with maybe performance, trying to have an infinite world. Uh, well, if you do it smart, then uh, it won't impact performance. That's okay. As I said, if uh, it's just procedural, the, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the thing is, I mean, if you do it um, like some lazy implementation, <laughs> then uh, yeah, it would impact performance. So you probably could. You see, you probably could just do it like tomorrow. You, could, you yeah. probably do it pretty quickly. You can just like, yeah. There is some maximum number of as uh, asteroids being spawned in the world and we can just increase the number to 10,000, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's not the smart way. No, no, you know, and um, it probably make some people quite upset. Quite upset. <laughs> um, oh, there's a couple more that I would, um, oh, that was, it's not, I can't remember it now, it was, the, it was, it was a suggestion that you could have, with the, over, with the overdrive on um, thrusters, you could have, you could set the overdrive, oh sorry, you could set the amount of power it produced, so then when you went forward, um, basically um, it allows for asymmetrical designs, so you could have on one side, you could have a ship, you know, a ship like this, and they have a big thrust of this side, maybe a couple, it, it, it could be a weird design looking ship, but it, it allows for asymmetrical designs, and basically the overdrive is, you could, it's, it's like a toggle, so you, you would set the thrust to power, in the settings, and then when you went forward, um, it you use that amount of power, and the overdrive that makes it just constant would be a, a checkbox. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you get me? You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe it's one of the things we may do uh, uh -huh. allow people to configure. Yeah, and it's, it's, and it's uh, okay, another thing about thrust would be the thrusters on rotors as well. I mean, people wanting to create like uh, vertical lift stuff, but obviously in space, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much. But um, I st uh, yeah, there's another question that people ask about is allowing thrusters through rotors. Uh, is, that so, is that something that um, you thought you've talked about? Uh... I don't understand. Well, at the moment, if you put a thruster on a rotor, it you can't you, you can't use it. Um, it would allow you. You think of like uh, you know the VTOLs. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be like that. So um, you could pa you could use thrusters through rotors. Well, um, maybe what what uh, you're saying is that right now when you are controlling a ship. Uh, uh, the game actually doesn't apply the force in the position where there is the thruster, but it applies the force in the middle or in the center of the ship, mm -hmm. uh, which makes the controlling piloting of the ship uh, a lot easier. And otherwise, uh, you know, like, otherwise you would need to have really symmetrical sheet and, and so on. So, okay. Uh, yeah. What we actually plan to do sometime in the future is uh, disable this thing and uh, you can think of it, of it as an autopilot. So if you turn off this autopilot, uh, the force would be applied exactly where it should be applied. And so of course these ships would be harder to control, like almost impossible. Yeah. But I believe that some people just want that. Because I think it was the... I reminded you the ships being uncontrolled, wasn't there a, there wasn't, the, the gyros were changed recently, weren't they? Yes. And, it's, and I think it's one of the options made them quite, make some ships quite crazy to control. <laughs> um, I've got modders, modders wanting uh, block strength entries, because at the moment, to set the strength of a block, I believe it's down to the number of components that's in them, just how strong they are. Um, it's the uh, mod suggested that in the in the files you could have a, a block strength entry, so you could just set the strength of it. Um, would would that work? Well, the, the individual components are actually uh, you can you can set that strength instead of the number of components mm -hmm. setting that. Well, maybe it can be done. 
Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 spoke, I spoke to someone earlier about this, so it was just about, with the optimization, having a slider. So from, 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 best, uh, from best kind of looking models to worst looking models. Uh, I think we will start adding uh, things like this in the in next month. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, the, the reason why we haven't done this is that... Uh, oh, sorry. sorry, that's the name of the scale. <laughs> sorry, it's a long day. <laughs> we, uh, until now we uh, focused just on adding new blocks mm -hmm. and uh, there are still blocks then that are not very uh, optimized. They're like blocks that are, have too many, uh, uh, they have more polygons than they actually they need to be. Yeah. Uh, plus we don't usually have uh, LOD, you know, level of detail yeah. models. Some of them are there already, but... I've uh, seen that, the, the update today, isn't there? There's the... the new it's for models, yeah. Mm. But uh, for the, the default models, we don't have it for so many default models. And mm. we're just starting to edit them. And uh, so this will be actually like one of the optimizations that's not actually about programmers, but about uh, 3D artists. Okay. And uh, while we will be doing this, we can actually set the distances where the different lot models switch in and switch out. And uh, uh, so I believe that uh, this is how people with some slower computers will be able to control the performance. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there is there's this thing that in a high uh, quality uh, rendering with options, uh, you the game will render the high quality, high resolution model uh, if you are really close to the model. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we want actually is that if you are standing next to a thruster, it looks like a real thruster, and uh, if it is 20 meters from you, so you cannot see the each individual detail. The detail, yeah. Uh, then we will switch it to less uh, less poly uh, mm -hmm. model, and if you get even further, like 100. It's just like a yeah. I just like a set of the block. So what we want to do is that in this uh, low quality rendering, uh, you wouldn't even see this high res resolution model even if you are standing next to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we we are just starting to to set these things. It's again it, this is not something that is like a rocket science. It's just right. like yeah we need to model uh, today. It's probably hundreds of models. I'm assuming, and because there is really many blocks, you know, and different options and, and the components and everything, so we need to remodel them and uh, set the proper level of detail models and so on. Yeah, okay, so cool. this will take some time. Yeah, I've probably got two more maybe. I've, uh, um, so I could say this this idea of having. Uh, decals on a ship and I'm not I don't really know the details of how this guy wanted it to work but it would almost allow you to have a, an image and you could just put it anywhere just almost stick it anywhere on the ship it wouldn't have to be bound to blocks it would almost just be like a floating thing you could just stick it on there um, and that and also the link with that would be um, colouring blocks more than one colour so instead of just having red and bits of red you could have like I think some person said like stripes or something. You could you could set um, yeah paint blocks more than one color. Well, I think if you want this, you can mod uh, blocks. So one color will be the the variable color. Mm -hmm. well, to be honest, I'm not not really sure how this color masking works. Yeah. And uh, because definitely uh, you need to set the the mask the color the masking color. Uh, properly to uh, so only those pixel will be variable and customizable with this you know slider thing mm -hmm. and uh, I, I will ask about okay this. cool there's a thing about um, more more hand more uh, now like I say so more weapons now I know you haven't really been con you, you you don't want to have too many things but there's the idea of just having a couple more so maybe like just like a pistol and just like a, just like a pistol and maybe like a, like a, a rocket mounted because it'd be quite cool to shoot a ship with a, 
a handheld rocket device that will just shoot the same rockets as the on-ship ones. And also, like, um, I think, which is the best thing for space engineers would be stuff like tracking bugs. So you could just chuck it on the stuff of a ship and it would, it would allow, it would go through um, aerials and stuff and it allow you to, you know, track enemy ships. And also just handheld explosives for like, so it would just be like a, like a C4 block and you could just stick it to the side and just blow it up. And I think for like sabotage and stuff, I think in space engineers would be, really good even if it wasn't weapons I think just handheld explosives and tracking bugs would be quite cool so is, it, is that something you've um, considered stuff like that well to be honest not that much uh, we we wanted the game to, fo to be focused on creation and not so much on the ground is what I remember yeah, yeah. your ships shooting other ships not so much and uh, but I mean who knows what we'll, what <laughs> yeah. we'll decide to do in a two years, three years. Mm -hmm. It is not something that uh, it is against the vision, you know. It's yeah. like quite okay with the vision. It's just a matter of priorities. And uh, but the vision was always that a uh, player should fight by uh, using ships. his creativity and mm -hmm. by building ships uh, and building stuff, mm -hmm. building machines. And yeah, less about just shooting. And to be fair, I think stuff like that. I think it won't be long before models do it. You know, I think models. So models will do the thing. So, I think the last question I'm going to ask. Let's have a look here. Hmm, I've, I've asked quite a lot. I'm not. I might ask. Hmm, I even might ask this one. <laughs> uh, if you or. Okay, well, well, maybe I'll... So, I had a couple of people asking about speed. Now, obviously the max speed um, it, at the moment is due to limitations of the engine and uh, I, I'm pretty sure it would start, start to go a bit crazy after 104. Now people, I think that's what they're saying, if the, I mean, they, they, he called it a problem, but maybe that's just the way the game will be. Uh, and linking to that was also some people didn't like the fact that the astronauts are faster than the ships. Now I know that was to catch them, but maybe that could be an option because it when if you're it it it, um, it encouraged people to build ships if they were significant if they were faster than. Uh, well, the reason why we um, made astronaut faster was that. Just imagine that you are on a speed uh, on a ship that's moving at its maxed uh, speed, and you want to move on this ship uh, in the direction of the of the movement. Yeah. And if you cannot move faster than the ship, then you basically wouldn't be able to do yeah. the step. So uh, this is one of the reasons why we made this. And uh, I'm not saying uh, the the. I mean, we were. Uh, I mean, it was a serious decision about the speed at the beginning of the development. Well, because when it first came out, when, when, when I first got Space Engineers in October, or was it at the start of November, I, I remember the astronauts jetpack was a lot slower. Like, it was like, it was quite, yeah, to get anywhere, it was, it was much, much, much slower than it um, is now. Um, and, I mean, models, they will probably change the speed. Yeah. And, uh, Well, maybe if we think about the speed today, after we are much more experienced yeah. than we were a couple months ago, maybe we will find out some solution. Usually the thing is that if the speed is uh, too high, then the object uh, has a chance to... Uh, I mean, it's, it's obvious that uh, uh, if you have some time limit, like one second, and if it moves really fast, he can change his position in the second yeah. re really, uh, really large distance. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that you need to do collision detection on this entire area. And, that, and it's, it's just performance, more, more and more. Yeah, it's just uh, like, as you, if you look on it as a geometry, uh, it's just a lot more polygons you need to compare if they are colliding or not. And uh, so. But uh, 
as I said, we are like uh, uh, more and more uh, skilled in developing this game. So maybe yeah. today we can actually uh, do something else. So I think about this and uh, mm -hmm. cool. I say I, I've I've been cheeky and asked the, the, the very last one. So can we get a rough ETA on rails? I mean, you could say a couple of months or you know what we're we looking at roughly. I don't know. Don't know. No idea. Okay, well, well thank you very much Marek, thank you for asking the questions, you, and uh, no, it's been a great time, um, it's, it's, you know, this, this, this amazing studio, um, and I can tell that you guys have been working really hard here, and I look forward to seeing what, you know, what Space Center has become in the future, and also what your, all your future projects will be. Okay everyone, so you've reached the end, and I, um, I thank everyone who stayed around this long, but now I'd like to say a big, 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 big thank you to Keen Software House and Marek for hosting me. It was a truly amazing experience and one that I'll never forget. And maybe one day I'll have the pleasure of meeting you all again. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the community's suggestions and answer everyone's questions. I know that we are all very grateful for it. To the viewers, I hope that you enjoyed these two videos and that most of your questions were answered. I also hope that now you are as excited as I am for the future of Space Engineers, as there is clearly a lot of cool stuff still to come. The last month has been pretty hectic for me, but now I should be back to putting out Space Engineers videos weekly, so don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all next time.